is also from Denver. He's up and down there doing the headlining thing everywhere he can get a job. <laughs> He's one of the hardest working comedians that I know from D Town. And he came all the way down here to make us laugh. So, everybody, put your hands together for our featured comedian of the evening, Mr. Evan Johnson. You guys doing all right tonight? Everyone doing good? Good to hear. Uh, that's why I look like this. Uh, definitely, I'm aware of what's going on here. I know that my hair looks like a Lego piece that you take off and put on other people. I'm aware of that. Okay, I know. I know what's going on. Okay. We grow my mustache out a little bit. I'm just too thick in. I'm going to get a dirty cop with a heart of gold. I'm aware. I look like I'm going to arrest you for cocaine, but also, that's my cocaine now. That's not. <laughs> With you, the fuck is I'm gonna do that shit, man. I don't think Pablo Escobar never quite made it through puberty. Like, I'm just like halfway through it. I don't know. I'm trying to look like kind of like a millennial Wolverine. You know what I mean? Like, that guy. Ah, social justice. I don't know. <laughs> hashtag BLM. He just says a hashtag with his claws. Be really. <laughs> if you're not laughing, you're not imagining that, right? Uh, <laughs> I do have an interesting look. I'm vaguely ethnic. I don't know if you can tell from my eyebrows. Uh, but yeah, I have a weird thing going on. I'm mostly a uh, Native American and Hispanic. And uh, people love to ask me. I don't know if you heard earlier, my last name is Johnson. And people love to ask. They're like, well, if you're Native American, how's your last name Johnson? How did that happen? How'd your last name become Johnson if you're Native American? I love to ask those people, how do you think that happened? Why don't you? <laughs> Look me in my brown face and tell me how you think that happened, you honky bitch, don't you? <laughs> Definitely wasn't like a <laughs> mutual decision. Um, <laughs> oh, you're upset, so are my ancestors. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man, that's weird. It is weird being Native American because I'm like super vaguely ethnic, so it means like. I get called the wrong racial slurs all the time, which is fucked up, because when someone calls me the right racial slurs, I am much too congratulatory to that person. <laughs> it's like, first try, nice, you also not hot, not just racist. Every time it's just racist, but I hope so. And by the way, the one that I've been called a lot, and then for sure just bringing it on myself by bringing it up in my comedy, uh, but I've been called a timber n-word. A timber n-word, like timber is in the type of wood, then n-word is in a, my grandpa's favorite term for basketball players. And, uh, oh, you guys have not racist grandpas? Good for you. Um, <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird though. Like, it's weird when someone calls you that timber N word, because obviously it's super fucked up and offensive. But also, every time someone calls me it, I laugh in their face. Because when you say that phrase out loud, it kind of rhymes and that's adorable. <laughs> What are you racistly freestyling at me? Back to reality, you're a fucking spit. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. What the fuck? Like, obviously, it'd be really fucked up and offensive, but also, if you had a dwarf friend who had ADD, he'd laugh at least the first time you called him your fidget issue. Like, <laughs> you'd probably enjoy that, I don't know. It's weird being there. I had a friend, my best friend, we've been friends for 10 years. He asked me recently, he goes, as a Native American, are you offended that there's a, a football team called the Redskins? And I was like, I am much more offended by the fact that we've known each other for 10 years and you think I give a shit about football. That's much more. <laughs> you guys can look at me and tell I don't give a shit about football. I guess, <laughs> how many buttons do I have to undo to get that message across? <laughs> But like, I, I just, I'm also like in the minority of this opinion, but I don't care if you change the fucking name of the Redskins. That uh, was not gonna, what is it gonna, Avengers Endgame, all the dead Native American people in there. There's a bunch of casino owners and drunkards walking out of portals. Like, it's not gonna be good for our cause. Um, white people be wild right now. I love it. They're all fucking anti mask I love the white people are anti mask because honestly, if you just follow your own advice and stop resisting, you'd be way cool with it. Um, <laughs> It is, but I've been getting lots of fights with white people online and on stage and just like on the street. Uh, <laughs> it's been like my new favorite pastime. Mostly because uh, I, I get in fights a lot about white privilege. And here's my stance on it, is that it's not that, that other people don't have privileges, 
is that white privilege is the only one without any downsides. That's what it is. There's no downsides to white privilege. I can even take race out of it. I have what I like to call piece of shit privilege. I work as a garbage man. I'm not saying like I'm a garbage man to the experiment. I literally work as a, I'm a janitor, okay? I work as a fucking janitor. I showed up work four hours late the other day. No one said anything. <laughs> no one did anything. You all fucking wish you could do that, okay? You all wish you could show up to your job four hours late and no one did anything. That's a piece of shit privilege right there. Downside, if I die alone in my house, it's gonna be like four weeks before anyone finds me. Like that's, <laughs> And if I were white, it'd take like two. Like that's, see how it works now? Like that's kind of the thing. Like obviously I'll be making a bunch of money for those first four days, but also I will have suffered the same fate as like a hoarder's cat. You know what I mean? Like I'm just flat under a couch covered in jizz. And I only, I only want two of those three things. And, and it's the jizz one twice. Um, <laughs> How do you make a rage joke about jizz? Ask Evan. Uh, <laughs> oh man, it is weird. It is strange living in Denver, because like legit, this is true, and other people, like fucking other brown people don't even believe this. Like people will come up to me, I'll just be like sitting on this side of the street smoking a cigarette or something, and like to sell arguments, people will come up and be like, what are you? Like what's going on? Like I'm the predator. Like that's why I like, I'm fucking, oh, what the hell are you? Like it's that kind of thing, like creepy. I went to Atlanta recently, they just assumed I was a white guy. It was the fucking best. You guys know about Atlanta? Have you heard about this? I don't know if it's like a recent thing. It might, I don't know. You guys, have you heard that in Atlanta as opposed to Denver, there are way more uh, black people? Have you heard about this? Do you know about this? <laughs> might be new, I don't know. It's crazy. It's the best, man. Like, they just thought I was so, like, so white. This is how white they thought I was. They were bringing me off stage and they would go, give it up last, that last white kid, or else he might shoot the place up. Like, that's how white they thought I was. <laughs> Like, I was getting to the point where I was like, I could tell them, I was like, hey, uh, I'm an Hispanic and Native American, you don't have to say that every time I get off stage, and they're just like, mm, I think you're Italian and you're lying the way a dirty fucking Italian would, so. <laughs> get back on stage, you pasta monkey. That's <laughs> uh, fucking spaghetti queer. Um, yeah. Giddy wop, that's just a real one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I hate Italians. Uh, yeah, that is weird. It's weird going on the road for comedy in Atlanta was cool. I went to the Midwest. Man, the Midwest is fun looking the way I do. I used to have really long hair, like long shoulder length hair. And uh, I would go to the Midwest and they were confusing me for a woman so much, man. Like, just like, like in a grocery store I was there and this guy came up to me and I swear to God, he goes, oh my God, man, you and my wife have the same exact mustache. It's so crazy. <laughs> Uh, this, is, this is a true story. I was with my girlfriend in, uh, in Nebraska, I believe. And uh, we were checking in those, this hotel, and I was just fucking stoner, and I just smoked a lot of weed. So we checked in, and I forgot something in the car, so I had to go back to the car. And when I got back inside, I was like, I don't remember the room number. So I came up to the front desk, and he's like, hey, I checked in five minutes ago. I forgot our room number. I had to get some of the car. Could you just tell me what room we checked into? That'd be really helpful. And she looks at me and goes, actually, sir, I can't tell you uh, the room number because it was two females who checked into that room. You understand that means she both thinks I look like a woman and someone who kills women. Like, that's fucking... <laughs> and that explains a lot about me every time I pass a mirror. I'm like, hey, what's up? Oh. Like, I get scared. I'm like, I just don't know what the fuck it. It's very strange. Um, it's a weird time. I just know what I look like. I fucking... This is, these are jokes, by the way. I'm aware that my jawline can cut glass. All right? So I'll calm down. I realize I'm gorgeous. And it's not funny to talk about how my dick looks big on me. Um... <laughs> Cool like, I can almost like wiggle like a pencil. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I got a weird body. By the way, I got a weird body. It's not in the clothes. It's fine. I can like I'm not skinny. I, this is not like I've been worried. This is poverty chic. That's what this is right now. Like how do you get that body? Don't eat the meals you can't afford. That's what you do. It's really easy. I don't know. And like I'm so, I'm so skinny. This is real. Every time I've slept with a woman. And I got up and like walked around naked. They hadn't said something like, oh God, your body's so sexy. You're like, God, I just, I love your body. What they have said almost every time without fail is, God, I wish I had your body. <laughs> yeah, not a compliment, ladies. Just let you know. Like, you know what you really hot is if you didn't have the head of the Tapatio guy. That would be really trying to <laughs> You didn't look like a corporate representative for Sriracha. Like, you're really, really, really hot, man. I don't know. 
I, I was even sleeping with a chick recently, I swear to God, this is true. She's sitting there, she's like rubbing my chest, she just goes, you know what, your chest hairs aren't really coming in. I'm 26, they're done coming in. Okay? <laughs> It's not giving me confidence, I don't know what the fuck. I'm also, like I said, my chest, I'm hairy, not in like a manly way though. I ain't got nothing here. I'm, like, I'm not hairy, like there are dudes with beards all over the place nowadays. Like I'm not hairy the way like a, like a man is hairy. I'm hairy the way like a, like a piece of gum that fell on the floor. It's like, <laughs> trying to bits everywhere, you can't really tell where it begins or where it ends. Like, I'll give you some reference. Each of my nipples has a different kind of male pattern baldness. That's what I'm <laughs> Where one's like, no, I still have a mohawk, what are you talking about? The other's just like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Yes. <laughs> the process has a ring on it. Uh, yeah. like, and I, I'm so hairy, I have two happy trails. That's right, I have two happy trails, one in the front, one in the back. And here's some insider info for you guys. That's not two happy trails, that's just one unhappy U-turn. That's all that is. <laughs> They call it the Trail of Tears because if you get too close, your eyes are water like some onion. It's really also honors my Native American ancestors. So that's nice. So that's all <laughs> nice nod to them. Like, well, uh, yeah, man. I don't know. Things have been going weird. Everything's been going weird. Everyone's sad now, which I love because you're just all on my level. That's the, best, <laughs> that's the best thing about this. You're like, oh, my friends haven't wanted to hang out. And like, join me since fucking high school, dude. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's really great. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not like a. I do have some good news I want to share. I know I might, might be a little bit of a downer, but I do have some really good news I want to share with you guys. Um, it's pretty recent, actually. I, um, as of very recently, no longer have to take my antidepressants. And that's, thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, that's actually because earlier today, I uh, took all of them. So, uh, I'll do that. I'm not doing anything anymore. I'm tripping pretty hard. Uh, Antidepressants are weird to me, man, because the main side effect of all of them is that they might cause suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Which, which is the op opposite of the thing you want to have. Like, nothing else works that way. And it's like, you never buy a fire extinguisher if it might be a flamethrower. Just <laughs> <laughs> logistically, that doesn't make sense to do. Like, Pepper spray would sell way fewer numbers when you spray your attackers to get them faster and better at fighting. And you're like, shh, what the fuck? Spray them on some hot pepper spray. Like, you wouldn't be having a good time. All I'm saying is you don't pay to go to school to make you dumber, right? That's obviously why church is free. By the way, I'm not like anti-antidepressant or anything, or pro-depressant, if you will. Um, actually, I'm a comedian. Most of our jobs is to get you guys to buy drinks. I am fully pro-depressant. Uh, <laughs> just realized that. Uh, but I'm not, like, as a comic, I have plenty of fucking friends who need antidepressants. They have a broken brain and they need something to help them with their broken brain. But also, as a comedian, I have plenty of friends who don't need antidepressants. They just need to not sleep in a month bed because they're 30 fucking five years old. Like, if I'm like, we are done with a sad life, you won't be sad. Strange how that works out. Like, if you can't jerk off without shaking another man awake, maybe you just don't deserve to be happy right now. <laughs> Not in the cards for you, bro. <laughs> what's, what's going on? I don't know, some weird stuff's been going on with me. I did, I got, and it's Father's Day happened recently, or not, uh, no one cares. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I had a weird interaction with my dad on Father's Day because I'm not like the greatest son, uh, mostly because I dress like I'm older than him. But I, you know, like we were talking and I, I hit him up and I was like, hey dad, it's Father's Day, I'm gonna get you with some of your favorite beer and a, and a summer shandy for you. And he just sent me back a question mark. I was like, oh, I, I thought you liked that kind of stuff. I mean, if you don't know what it is, I mean, I, I, thought, you, I thought you were into that. You sent it back double question marks. I was like, I mean, if you don't know what those are, they're delicious, so don't worry about it. And then you sent me back, what the fuck are you talking about? And then I realized that Summer Shandy had autocorrected to Summer's Handy. I was like, hey, Pops, I'm coming over with your favorite beer and a Summer's Handy for you. He was like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, I, I thought you were into that kind of stuff. I thought you liked that kind of thing. He was like, what? Who do you think you're talking about? I was like, I don't know what they are, they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know if you can tell from how I bought my dad a hand job, but I've been single lately. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I hate being single, man. People ask you dumb shit for your singles. You're like, what's your type? What's your type? Uh, I don't know, willing and alive. I don't know. <laughs> and you can tell I'm desperate because alive was the second thing. <laughs> 
with my title. Are you trying to get me in trouble with every woman with an earshot with my fucking title? I'm supposed to say stuff like, oh, I want a girl who's like nice and can read and has a face or whatever the fuck like that. I don't want, I want a girl with barrels for the thighs so you can choke me out with a little bitch who I am. That's what I want. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that because it's shallow or whatever. So, I, mean, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's ridiculous. I, I did get told recently that I looked like I would kill one of my wives someday. And I'm just like, you think I'd have a wife someday? That's really nice. Possibly two if I got away with it. That's really nice odds for me, man. I'm really digging it. I don't know. I live, I live by DU. You guys know the college of DU down in Denver. I live by that. And I thought that'd be a good idea because I'm like kind of college age. I thought it'd be good to like hang out around them. I'm, I mean, you can tell I'm dressed like a fucking closet gay man in the 20s. I'm not gonna relate to that. I'm not gonna relate to those guys. And they're just live like I was. I was sitting on my porch one Friday, and I saw this girl walk by. And there was a line of bars on the street by the. I saw this girl walk by, and I was like, you know what? I'll see what they're doing. They'll probably lead me to other people my age, and we'll have a good time. It'll be at a bar. It'll be nice. And that seemed like a good idea uh, for like two blocks till the time. What they were doing was uh, going home. Yeah, just followed two women home. That's all that happened. <laughs> They got back to their apartment, turned around, and I'm standing there like, oh my god, you guys live here too? <laughs> Again. So I killed the woman, and uh, that's a secret that stays between the 50 of us. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man, it's weird. I, 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 I've, been, I've been trying to get into stuff like, uh, I, I, my friends always tell me I play the bass guitar in some bands, and they're always like, yeah, man, it'll get you late because you have uh, you should good finger and right hand, yeah, you're real good at which is a silly thing to say because I play the slap bass, only some chicks are in that kind of stuff. Um, if you don't want to hit women, you're not offense. Anyway, uh, I don't know, man. It's very strange. I had a girlfriend recently. She, I was going down. I'm just not like, good at communicating during sex, I think. I was going down on this girl, and she was like, oh, I'll spit on my pussy. And then I went, <laughs> and that was. Dates. Uh, it was just very, very upfront, very forward. She told me she had a rape fantasy, uh, so I just, I just had to be upfront with her. You know, I was like, I, I'm not into that kind of stuff. I don't like that. And she was like, well, that's perfect. <laughs> so she had a great day. Uh, I hope you guys did too. Uh, give it up for uh, Ruby. She did great. Our next comedian headlining all the way down from Denver, Colorado. You will find her on YouTube doing some uh, funny reads for uh, Disney movies. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to her channel.